Hi, this is Charlie Matutiello with another video on making and playing Native American flutes. Um, this flute we're going to make today is something I've had a lot of requests for, probably on more than one level. I normally don't use PVC to make flutes with. As a matter of fact, this is the first time ever in my entire life I made a PVC flute. Even for practice or for whatever reason, this is it. I've never done it before, so you guys will have to forgive me. Uh, although I have worked in PVC a lot of my life for other uses, uh, I've built signs out of PVC, and I've built uh, uh, scaffolding out of PVC, and I've built, uh, let's see, <laughs> potato guns, and a lot of other fun th stuff out of PVC. But anyway, um, this is the first flute I've ever made out of PVC, out of the millions of flutes that, that we've made. Um, so anyway, I wanted to show you something that you can make your own PVC bow staff flute, like the bow staffs that we make out of oak on our website. Uh, this is actually mentioned in my book, too. It's on page 140, and you can get all the instructions. It has a list of your materials that you need. It's kind of a little added bonus in the back of the book, and it has the exact measurements of all the holes and what sizes they need to be. And then also, um, you get the placement of the holes and some description of how to do this and how to slide that and how to make this. I don't know if you want to show them any of this. But uh, you can see that it shows you where every little piece, every subtle nuance, the coupling and everything goes. For the most part, you're going to find that this will make a, a reasonably consistent flute because this is not a mat natural material, it is man-made and has a lot of regular consistency about it. Um, you'll find that the flute will turn out to be uh, about the same every time with minor variations depending on how you make your track. So uh, a lot that can be done here and a lot that can be changed to make it in another way if you like. The particular one that we made here is actually I found in the key of E. Uh, it's really close to the key of F, uh, which, you know, it would take just this much to change it from one to the other. As a matter of fact, I say that because when I was uh, first making the flute, I finished it up and it was a key of E. I did a little bit of work to the track area here and it turns out it's closer to F. So. You're only a half step away from making an F-sharp flute. I mean, this, the possibilities are endless. But I'm going to show you what we did and uh, what we're going to get started with here. If you want to take a look at our minor supplies, we have one five-foot piece that's five feet long of one-inch diameter PVC. Now, this is U.S. PVC, and I know that there are some minor differences between some of ours and some of the ones, especially from India and possibly from the U.K. Uh, so. Whatever you get, you're going to be able to make a flute out of it, and it's going to sound great, whether it's going to be exactly in the key of E or not. You know, it's kind of it's going to take a little practice to get it there if necessary. You're going to need a piece of a one-inch dowel. Turns out one-inch PVC is actually an inch on the inside, so a one-inch dowel fits in there perfectly as a plug. We need one of those. We need two caps. These are just simple PVC caps. You can get all this stuff from any hardware store. Uh, that sells PVC products. Uh, very easy to, to get a hold of. Uh, most of the places I go are like Home Depot and Lowe's and, and uh, sometimes Harbor Freight, although they don't really carry PVC. I do get other stuff from um, Ace Hardware, some of those kind of stores. Uh, but uh, you'll need a coupling. The coupling needs to be a slip coupling that is full length. Full length couplings are usually about two and a half, almost three inches length. Uh, the reason you need one this long is because um, some of the other couplings aren't designed exactly the same way as this one is, and this one's going to perform better for you. Plus, it's long enough to cover your track area, which is quite important uh, for making sure that the flute plays properly. And uh, in just a second, we'll talk about what to do with this little rim. I know you can probably see it a little bit in there. There's a little ridge inside of the PVC. When you're shopping around, you may find that they have five different types of couplings there that look like this that fit a one-inch PVC. So I would recommend looking for one that has the smallest ridge inside possible, but it needs to be at least a two-inch length uh, so we can cover our track area. So that's really about all you need. And uh, the first thing we're going to do is kind of zoom in here and take a look at the hole spacings. Okay, so we're going to be measuring from one end of the PVC over here and uh, this is going to be our top of the flute it's the top of the walking stick or bow staff so we're going to be measuring from here and we're going to uh, should have got me a left-handed measuring stick I knew it 
Anyway, we're going to uh, measure once again using the, the measurements that are in the book. The first one is going to be right here. It's going to be the mouthpiece and it's about 21 inches uh, or 533 millimeters, give or take. And that's always, everything I do is an estimate and for a lot of reasons. Number one, this ain't rocket science. A lot of you I've talked to lately have been on the websites that give you, uh, and I'm probably uh, inadvertently referring you to those websites at this point, but a lot of the websites that give you the calculators that will go in and intricately tell you what key this is and what key that is per what size. But um, I'm not telling you to not use those or, or steering you away from them. I'm just telling you that the way that I make flutes um, is very similar to the way that people would have made them thousands of years ago, of course not with PVC, but the method that I share my flute making information. Um, and of course, please, if you can't find one of the schematics that I have posted somewhere or, or uh, in our book that uh, works for you and you need to find another method, absolutely feel free to do so. But um, I'm sharing with you the way that people would have made these instruments in the first place. They would have sat down together and said, hey, um, you know, would you like to come into my home and learn how to make flutes? And here we are. And, uh, you know, basically, um, there's always a little bit of, uh, of extra talk or, uh, uh, you know, a lot of times I like to try to tell you some tips and tricks and things that, that I do that are a little bit different than what you may find because I have been making flutes for over 28 years. Um, but at the same time, you know, those uh, calculation tools that people use to help calculate the inner diameter and length of a flute, I've talked to so many people in my life that have used those and have never made a single flute. Um, the reason being is that in, in life, you feel like as soon as you have a good grasp on things that you've mastered it and uh, there's no need to continue on. So it's, it's uh, one of those unspoken realities that people don't talk about, but as soon as you feel like, you know, there's just a scientific equation, I can always come back to it. Why bother trying now? I can try it later. There's so many ideas that people have. I'm urging you to make a flute right now. Use my schematics. Use something else. It doesn't matter. Just go ahead and do it and, uh, you know, make sure that you, you get the idea of how to do it properly. So, 21 inches is going to be the mouthpiece. The mouthpiece is going to be on the side here. So after we mark it, we're going to turn it sideways away from the camera. So it's actually right here where I'm going to play. Of course, if you're going to be a left-handed flute player or one of those, what do they call them? Um, right hand up, I think is what they call them. Um, you might want to put your mouthpiece on this side. Anyway, the next thing we're going to do is from that point, we're going to measure down to 24 inches, which is going to be right here. And we're going to mark close to... Uh, 610 millimeters then we're going to measure down to 25 and a half inches which is right about here once again 648 millimeters you can slide this down a little bit too and uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, mark one of the first fingerings these are actually the sound hole and the mouthpiece or in the the sound hole and the air supply hole so please forgive me there but uh we're going to go ahead and measure down to the next actual fingering, which is at 30 and 1 8 of an inch, which is 765 millimeters. We're trying to keep these in a straight line. I'm just going to go ahead and move it down for you. So keeping all these guys together. As I'm sliding this PVC, I notice that uh, my um, ruler is sliding. They're getting offset a little bit, but I go back and I double check to make sure that they're in the same exact place that they should be, and sure enough they are. Uh, let's see. Got them right there. Okay. So, we've got these guys marked. The next one is going to be the second finger hole, which is 31 and a quarter, or 794 millimeters, which is right about there. Then after 31 and a quarter, we're talking 33 and a quarter inches. 33 and a quarter inches and we can go back in a minute and double check all these by putting the roller up where it belongs and uh, it's a lot easier to hold it like this though so 33 and a quarter inches is 845 millimeters the next one is going to be 34 and 3 eighths most of this stuff is pretty easy to do if nothing else I'm keeping the standard system alive and people's use of rulers which some people, they have a hard time understanding how to read a ruler. Uh, so we got 34 and 3 eighths, 873 millimeters. And then the next one we're going to do is 35 and a half, 
which is right about there, roughly 902 millimeters. And then beyond 902 is the sound, um, uh, let's see, what should we call this? We should call this the actual uh, sound tuning hole, because this hole, being at the right location, is what determines the tone of the bass, you know, the bottom note of the flute also helps to keep the other guys in tune as well. Uh, so we're going to put that guy at 41 inches on the dot, which is 1,041 millimeters. And unfortunately, my ruler doesn't go to um, 41, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to trot down just a little bit beyond where 40 is here, what looks like about 41 to me. And I'm going to put a nut dot right here at 40 also to see if my guess is right. And you can see here that we're at about the right location. So this is about an inch below 40. And we need to take this one off. I have to do that with some sandpaper in a minute. Or maybe I can scratch it off. Or I could just remember, don't drill that second to last hole. There we go. Okay. So that's that. And now let's take a look just to make sure that we've got the fingerings in the right location. So we start off at the top here. The mouthpiece is kind of important, but not drastically important. You can see that it's at 21. That's good. So now we're just going to roll this over. And the next one is at 24, 25 and a half. Looks like uh, 30 and an eighth, 31 and a quarter, uh, 33 and what looks like a quarter, and then 34 and three eighths, 35 and a half. And then if you notice right here, we have a remnants of a dot where 40 inches would be and about an inch spacing down to the next hole. So we're good there. So the next thing we have to do, and really we're getting close to the end here, it's a pretty easy uh, flute build, we're going to go drill it out at our drill press. Okay, so the first thing we're going to drill out is the mouthpiece hole here. It's on the side. We're using a brad point bit. If you notice, my brad point bit has a little tip on it that helps me keep it lined up with the PVC. There was a time back in the day that I only used brad point bits because even the river cane that I was using to make my flutes out of was round. And having something round, you don't want the drill bit to roll on you. Uh, the drill bit rolling is a real common thing when you're drilling in something round. I know a lot of you are probably saying, yep, sure is back there. Um, but uh, this brad point bit has a neat little kind of a notch on the end of it there, like a pilot, that helps keep it lined up. I don't use them as much these days because I found some sharper, uh, really good bits uh, that I use to drill things out with that I like even better than brad points. Brad points do have a tendency in river cane or in wood to tear. Uh, to start with, they're great, but once you get through the actual material itself uh, into the inside of it, it tears that last bit out. So that's why I started using these guys. And it makes it a little bit easier on the back end. So the next hole we're going to drill is going to be the air supply hole. This is PVC, so you could really drill it out with just about anything. I don't recommend using hot coat hangers and hot uh, materials on PVC because it does give off a, a kind of a noxious gas whenever you do that. And uh, probably not a bad idea to work on this outside regardless, although um, you know, if the PVC that you use has any kind of uh, safety precautions with it, you know, just follow those. Next, we're going to drill out the sound hole. After drilling out the sound hole, let's see, it looks like I may have reached the length of my throw of my drill here. Let's see if we can't start it this way. Hey, how about that? I guess I'm going to have to move it back out. I knew there was a reason I kept it moved out like that. There we go. Move some of these things out of the way. And.
encourage you to uh, be careful. Read all safety manuals of your equipment that you're using. Um, PVC like this, when it gets molten, can be very hot and can burn you. Uh, your drill bits may be sharp. Don't try to take the PVC off the drill bit while you're drilling. <laughs> I can tell you the list goes on. A lot of these mistakes are ones that I've made myself. And I didn't tell you up front I probably should have. This is a 5 16 uh, drill bit. So 5 16 of an inch uh, is the size of the drill bit, roughly, I guess, 8 millimeters or so. And uh, we drilled every one of these holes out with that same size. You know, it's got a little bit of, of uh, burr sticking out of some of these holes, but we'll clean that up in just a second. And uh, that's it for the 5 16 drilling. The next thing we're going to use. Side. Okay, so this is a three quarters inch Forstner bit. It's really the only uh, three quarters size drill bit that I usually keep around. I do have some paddle bits that are about that size. I also have, uh, you know, maybe a, a, a hole cutter bit that's okay. You can use any of those kind of things, but I like to use a Forstner bit, so that's usually what I keep within reach. And I'm going to drill this hole out. Once again, the Forstner also has a little pilot bit on it, which is kind of handy that type of thing. And we want to keep all of these holes as lined up as possible. Make sure you're wearing safety goggles. They can't see that I'm not wearing safety goggles. Can they? <laughs> uh, make sure you're wearing safety goggles. There we go. And uh, that's all the drilling that we're going to have to do. So you can make a nice little round hole there. And uh, Next, I'll show you where we're gonna where we're gonna go next. What we're gonna have. To... Okay, so as I told you, there's a little something we're gonna need to do to the inside of this coupling. You can see that uh, right here. There's a little ridge. Can you see that pretty good in there? That ridge is gonna need to go away so that we can slide it down the PVC. Now, of course, any of you really strong guys that have worked with PVC before, both of us know that we can slide this down the flute or down the PVC without knocking that ridge out. However, it will leave a, a gap inside of it um, which will let air escape everywhere and make a real airy sounding flute. We want to avoid that. So let's see what we're going to do. I have several solutions for this. Um, a good pocket knife, if you're careful. You see I'm scraping it there? That's just an exacto knife. And a pocket knife has a long straight blade. That probably would work better than this. Check it out real quick. As y'all know, I always have my little pocket knife with me. You can scrape it like this if you take your time. Try not to, to scrape the edge of the, the coupling, just this rim that's on the inside, this little ridge. So that's uh, one method of doing it. But for the video here, I'm going to show you the way I like to do things in a quick way. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to dremel it out. Follow along with some of this. Okay, I think I got it. You can always check by uh, seeing if it slips. Well, your PVC boys out tight. It's gonna make a good. Oh, it's so tight to keep it off. Uh, make a really good flute block. There we go, finally. I guess a little bit of oil would probably help. I can still feel on the inside though that the rim is pretty much gone, that little ridge in there. So that's all we really needed to do with that. Um, the next thing we're going to do, once again, several different techniques that you can do this. Uh, the one that I prefer to use is once again my Dremel, but I'll show you to start with. Um, you can use a flat blade push exacto type knife or hobby knife and you can gouge it like this you know once again when you're working with a hard material which is PVC is a really hard material you have to be careful not to cut yourself not to cut too far outside of where you're trying to to whittle but uh, you'll notice that uh, with anything, it's not a bad idea to uh, draw yourself a guideline there. I'm drawing it with the knife. 
and then you can go in and very carefully start chiseling some of this out. It's a lot of work that way. You can also go across with your knife here to start with. I'm only doing a little bit because this will take some time if we were to complete this step using these methods. A lot of people just kind of stop at this right here and for PVC flute makers I've met a couple of them, some really good ones too by the way um, that are friends of mine that they'll just stop at that right there and that's their track and that's not the way I do it you know, we can certainly try it with that method but uh, I like to, to gouge it out and, and to make sure that I have a nice square track in there so anyway lots of techniques you can use. I'm going to show you what I'm going to do here. Fortunately, there are a number of, uh, what's the politically correct name for this Dremel? Rotary tool. <laughs> There's a lot of rotary tool bits out there. And one of them that I like to use is this little guy. It's just a little cutter blade, but it's, it's steel and not made out of carbon. Uh, they also make a bit just like this that's about a quarter of an inch or five sixteenths wide, which would be perfect for digging down in there. Back in the day, like, I don't know, 16, 18 years ago, that's what I used to always make my flute tracks with. I always kept those on hand. And you definitely need to make sure that you wear your goggles. Please be sure to wear your goggles. Any of these things that can fly back in your eyes, you only get two sets of eyes, or two, two eyes, rather, one set, one pair. Okay, so what I've done there is effectively made a track. It's not perfectly square, by the way. Lots of reasons to wear your goggles. Um, anyway, it's not perfectly square or cleaned out yet. We can do that. A little bit of cleaning up, truing work with knives and with our chisels and all this kind of stuff. A lot of you are thinking, how deep do you need to make this? How thick should it be? How, how much of an air channel should there be there? I've had so many people ask me that question. Uh, those questions, and uh, I always refer back to my rocket science analogy, which this is not. Um, you know, different flutes require a little bit of different uh, amount of air, so you might want to try and kind of shallow first and then make it a little deeper later. Usually about twice the thickness of a piece of paper or uh, like maybe even twice the thickness of a piece of cardstock. Substantial difference between those two materials, but somewhere in the median lies the way we should do it. There we go. Nice and clean. I've got that. I'm gonna have to turn this at a slightly different angle so I can hit it better. Trying to clean it up and make a nice smooth ramp there for the air to travel down. The next thing we're going to do is just clean that up with a little bit of sandpaper and I'm going to do some filing in here so that I have a nice slanted edge inside of this hole on this side of it. That slanted edge makes it easier for the air to break and uh, cause a vibration. Once I get this cleaned back up, uh, I'll show you where we're going to go next. Okay, so what we've done is we've cleaned this area out here. I've made it slanty. It takes a couple of minutes to do that kind of thing. And you're using files and chisels and all this kind of mess. Um, sandpaper works really well, but you're going to do that. I've got uh, more of a, of a deeper area back here, closer to the air supply, and kind of finer up here at the, uh, the actual sound hole. The reason being is it gives me more airflow and makes it a little bit more articulate. Should make the flute a little bit louder. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to fit this plug in between these two places here. And it needs to be right at the back edge of this sound hole. So if you see where I'm looking at right there, 
not too close definitely not that that'd be too too deep in there and not far back because it's going to change the tone it needs to be right at the edge okay the easiest way to do this is to take your piece like this push it in there get it started as far as you can take a smaller dowel push and push and push and push a little light tap and you'll find let's see if we can see it coming through there Too far. Hey, it's right at the edge. And if you can see it there, right there. That's too far. I'm gonna use how about my pocket knife. So it's pretty loose in there. Not too loose, but a little bit. Pushed it right back to the edge. Okay. So we're going to use a tiny drop of super glue. Let me grab some of that right quick here to lock this guy into place. All I'm going to do is drop it down into the uh, sound hole, tilt it back, just let it kind of cover that whole area. I'm rolling it around so that it drips from side to side like that. I'm rolling it around this way. Let's go ahead and turn it upside down for a second. Got a little bit of a drip of super glue. You don't want to touch that stuff with your skin. Or anything that's going to stick to, you know, you've probably seen me doing it, but uh, believe me, it's not a good idea. You have to really know how to use that stuff. Of course, PVC cement would work to a degree, and regular carpenter's glue would work great as well, but uh, it doesn't really adhere to plastic too well. So, uh, super glue is actually the cyan acrylic glue is the same thing that they use in PVC cement to make the PVC um, soft so uh, it, as it's drying in there it's actually bonding it to the wood which is kind of cool. So anyway we've got this guy taken care of. The next part as you notice was kind of on the tricky side because our uh, coupling let's see, we've got oil all in the shop <laughs> I can use. Here's a bottle of my sunflower. The sunflower oil has tea tree oil in it by the way to help keep any bacteria from growing, which is kind of nice. Just lubricate this stuff just a little bit, like that. And I'm going to slide it on here. On the floor once. So I may have to use a hammer to do this. Be careful not to cut yourself. So here's our area there. Let's see. I have to grab something to bump that with. There's so many different ways you can do things, like I mentioned. And uh, one of them is by using your head. You can do that. Let's see where we're at. A little ways to go. Now we're getting close here. You can see we're starting to cover the air supply hole, but the sound hole is nowhere near this piece. Let's come closer. It won't play right now because there's no plug in this end, so we'll put the cap on this end. And now we have an air chamber in here, and this is our air supply we're going to blow through. Sounds better than my first one. Sounds like there may be a little tuning that needs to be done on that hole, but not too bad. It's pretty close. made out of PVC, it's incredibly strong. Um, this piece of material here can really take a beating, literally. So, um, makes a good flute. But still not something uh, I've ever done more than twice, and for a lot of reasons. But uh, anyway, I hope you guys have enjoyed 
this PVC Bostaff flute built. It's a little warm here in the, in the south right now this time of year, as you may have noticed. But uh, I definitely wanted to share this with you. It's a, a great flute. I really enjoy making the, the bow staff and walking stick flutes. They're a great, uh, great instrument. They serve multiple purposes. There's a lot of a lot you can do with them. Uh, being that this guy here is made out of PVC, all your parts are easily found and easily replaced if something happens that you were in your martial arts class practicing with this and you accidentally broke the cap here or something. Um, you know, there's a lot that can be done with these guys. So. I didn't lock this one down. You can, of course, drop a little droplet of PVC cement or super glue, Sonic Creek glue, under the edge there. Just don't clog up your track area because that track area is very, very important and uh, you, know, you don't want to mess that up. But otherwise, this guy here turned out really good. Nice walking stick, a little bit of uh, duct tape or some PVC or plastic paint, which they sell at most major hardware stores these days. Uh, one company I will stand up for is Rust-Oleum. I've really, I've really enjoyed their products for a long time, and they carry a great, a really excellent um, PVC and uh, plastic paint. It'll paint just about anything. You can make it any color you want. Uh, one of my favorite ones is the hammered finish, uh, and you could go back and make this thing look like something other than PVC, which is cool. They sell different types of caps for PVC as well, so you don't have to settle for just this round top one that looks like an actual typical PVC cap like I've got here. There's all different types. There's some that are actually plugs that go inside. Um, and a lot of you are thinking to yourself, well, I know they make a plug that goes inside of a coupling, but I've actually found plugs that go inside of the PVC. Not to mention you could put a wooden dowel in there instead, like we did with the rest of it. Just a small plug dowel to cap it off and you won't have this PVC look to it. Uh, like I say, duct tape comes in a lot of colors and shapes. Camouflaged, uh, I've seen duct tape at my local uh, local retail store that had little mustaches on it, which is kind of cool. Um, so, you know, whatever kind of mustache, walking stick, bow staff you need, I'm sure you find a way to make it look like that. Just don't cover up this hole, these holes, that hole, or this hole, and you're set. And if you do cover those holes, you know, drill them back out, uh, cut it out, whatever it takes. And uh, I hope you've enjoyed this flute making tutorial. And certainly uh, it's been fun making my second PVC flute with you guys uh, out of the millions of other flutes that I've made and, and my wife Jessie's made. Uh, I've only made two out of PVC. If you're looking at this one and its predecessor right here. Uh, but uh, definitely send us any messages you need to. If you have any questions, don't forget to check out my flute making book, which is available now. It's a pretty reasonable price, $39.95 with free worldwide shipping on our website. Kind of a special little deal there and uh, also uh, find all your schematics and shapes and designs and everything. Lots of details, lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of pictures and schematics and diagrams and everything you can dream of. If you want to know more about one place or the other, for, there's details in the for you. Anyway, this is Charlie Montatuyella signing off for BlueBearFlutes.com and BlueBearArts on Facebook as well as YouTube. Come and see us and happy flute.